So you're thinking about moving to the greater Seattle area and you really want to know what some important things are to know before you move over here so you can make that decision if Seattle is a good place for you to move to. Well, in this video, I'm going over 31 things you should know before you move over here. So stay tuned. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified whenever I put out a new video here on what it's like living over in the Seattle metropolitan area. I love helping you guys out. Those of you that reach out to me here from YouTube when you're making a move over this way, feel free to reach out to me here at my info down below. I am an active real estate agent and love helping you guys out when you're making that move and looking to purchase a home over here in the Seattle area. But like I said on this video, I'm going over 31 things that you should know. This is kind of like an ultimate guide on moving over to the Seattle area. Things that you should know before coming over here so you can get a good lay of the land and a good feel for what it's actually like living over here. I'm not just talking about the city of Seattle in this list, I'm talking about the Seattle metropolitan area. For the majority of you that I help out that contact me here from YouTube, most of you are not moving to the actual city of Seattle. Some of you are, but a lot of you are moving to an outlying suburb. So this list of 31 things you should know encompasses the entire Seattle metropolitan area. I'm gonna go through this list quick. It's 31 items. I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long. So we're gonna go through this list pretty quick here. Starting off with number one, there are a lot of different suburbs outside of Seattle. So this goes along with what I'm saying. There's over 75 different cities in the Seattle metropolitan area. So when you're coming over here, don't get settled in just on what it's like living in the city of Seattle. Explore those other suburbs and figure out what the best place for you might be around here. Number two, this is one of the best areas you can be for healthcare. US News ranked Washington State as the number four state in the country when it comes to healthcare and your healthcare needs. There's a lot of uh, rec uh, nationally acclaimed hospitals and facilities over here for cancer care or whatever the case is, trauma centers. There are some amazing hospitals in this area, so a great place for that. Point number three here is there's no state income tax. So if you're coming from a place like California or one of these other many states that have state income tax, when you come over here, you don't. So you're gonna save a bit more on you know, your, your actual income. You're gonna be bringing a bit more home because you are not paying any state income tax. Point number four, the tech industry is huge over here. So I know a lot of you know that. Uh, if you're coming over here, maybe you're coming over here because you're thinking about taking a job with like an Amazon, a Facebook, a Google, a GoDaddy, um, a Microsoft, any of these companies. There are a ton of tech companies over here. It is a tech hub here in the Seattle and Bellevue area. So a lot of high paying jobs around here. Point number five, outside of just tech, there are other industries as well. This is a super common question I get asked. There is a lot of great, like I mentioned, healthcare job opportunities. There's biotech, there's maritime, there's manufacturing jobs. There's a lot of different, there's aerospace is huge over here, obviously with Boeing. Um, there's a lot of different other industries and jobs around here for you to take. It's not just tech jobs. There's a lot of nice high paying jobs in this area. Point number six to know, there are urban living options around here. So if you're somebody that wants to live in a downtown, you want to live in a walkable area, you want a condo and a high rise building, you want to be able to live without having a vehicle, there's some options for you like that here in Seattle. You're going to focus primarily on two cities, Seattle and Bellevue, if you want urban living options. There's some different neighborhoods within Seattle that may be better than others for what you're looking for. South Lake Union is a super popular uh, place to live that's super walkable. People live without vehicles. They can walk to work and restaurants and stores and all that kind of stuff. So there's urban walkable areas. Same with downtown Bellevue. There's some spots like that as well. When you're downtown, you can live in a high rise condo and live in a very, very urban area. Point number seven is there's a lot of suburban areas. So if you want something on a cul-de-sac, you want a traditional sized lot with a single family home, you wanna have your neighbors close by, but you don't wanna have a condo. You want to live in a family friendly neighborhood uh, where your kids can play on the street and uh, where you can talk to your neighbors and all this kind of stuff. There are a ton of cities here that offer suburban living. Like I mentioned, there are 75 different cities, over 75 different cities in the Seattle metro area. Most of them, all of them really, have suburban living options where you're gonna feel like you're living in suburbia. Point number eight here, there's rural living options. So we're, we're checking off all the boxes here with different types of places that you can live. So with number eight on this list here, this is rural options. So if you want acreage, you wanna live 
couple different options here. You can live with acreage. You could get an acre plot, a two acre plot, and still have neighbors relatively close by you where you're feeling like you're living a bit more in the country, but you're not super far out. You're still close five, 10, 15 minutes to grocery stores and, and amenities and activities and things like that. There are a lot of cities, options like that. Um, and then there's options if you wanna live even more rural. You can live like you're way out, five, 10, 20 acres, even an acre, but you feel like you're way out. You can't see your neighbors. You feel like you're super private. There's options like that as well. Cities like Snohomish, Duval, uh, Fall City, Arlington, North Bend. These are some cities that you can find rural living options as well. Point number nine, there's both old and new neighborhoods. When you're on the west side of the Seattle metropolitan area, on average, the homes are gonna be a bit older because they're closer to the Puget Sound. They've been developed earlier. There's a lot of neighborhoods with early craftsmen and colonial style homes, early 1900s all the way through the 1940s and 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s, a lot of neighborhoods uh, with those year built homes. And then there's also new construction neighborhoods. This is primarily gonna be further east in the Seattle metropolitan area. If you want something with a newer home, you wanna buy a new construction or something that was built within the last five to 10 years, there's a lot of newer construction neighborhoods around here too. So depending on what you're looking for, there should be options on both realms of what you might want. Point number 10, home prices are higher than the national average here. You probably already know that if you've done your research about thinking about moving into the Seattle area. Unless you're coming from California or New York, one of these really expensive places, it's probably gonna be a, a, a higher price point than you're used to. The median price point uh, for the entire Seattle metropolitan area here is just over 750,000 for a single family home. Again, this varies a lot depending on which city, which suburb you're in of Seattle. Um, but that's about the median price point for the entire Seattle metropolitan area. It's gonna be a bit cheaper probably than, than for some of you coming from New York, but for the rest of you coming from other parts of the country, just know it is gonna be a bit more expensive than the national average. Point number 11 is it rains, but not as much as you think. We are not even close to the top when it comes to the most rainfall in the US per city. The average city in the US gets 38 inches of rainfall. Seattle annually, on average, gets 38 inches of rainfall. That's average for the entire United States. Miami is at the top of this list. Miami, Florida gets 67 inches of rainfall a year. Seattle, 38. So you can see in terms of volume of rain, we don't get as much rain as you might think. Now, when it comes to the days of rain, we get a good amount of days of rain. We are number five in the country when it comes to the actual number of days with rain. That's because we get a much more a drizzly, much lighter rain, which is often why you hear people around here don't actually own umbrellas. I don't even own an umbrella and I've lived here my entire life. So we don't get as many torrential downpours. You'll get, you're gonna get a good amount of drizzly wet days without it you know, consuming you the entire day with pouring down rain. Point number 12, summers are absolutely perfect around here. Average temperatures for June are 71 degrees, for July they're 78 degrees, and for August they're 79 degrees. These are average temperatures. You can get a bit higher, of course. There are times, it seems to be getting a little bit hotter every year. Uh, in the summer, maybe we'll get a few stretches with above 90 degrees. You get a lot of uh, days in the 80s, but it's very, very pleasant over here. It does not rain much in the summer at all, if at all and it's very pleasant, it's not too hot, not extreme where you can't go outside and enjoy the sun. Very, very nice and perfect summer where you can be outside every single day almost and enjoy being out there without being miserable. Point number 13 is snow is not gonna affect you very much through the winter time. The Seattle area gets an average of five inches of snow per year. The United States average per city is 28 inches a year. So we're not even close. We are way towards the bottom when it comes to actual snow. We usually get one decent snow storm, quote unquote, a year where you might have a couple of days with snow and, and you don't go to work or school shuts down. It's usually not a big deal. You're not gonna be dealing with snow the whole year. Much more mild climate over here in the Seattle area. Number 14 is we have endless water recreation activities. So over here we have the Puget Sound, of course. So if you wanna go on a ferry, you wanna go out on a boat, uh, you wanna take a paddleboard on the Puget Sound or, or go to one of the beaches that we have, one of the many beaches around here, you can do that. Go kayaking, look at the wildlife, dolphins, all that kind of stuff. You can do that around here. We have lakes all over the place. So if you wanna go wakeboarding and water skiing, uh, hang out, go fishing, go swimming at many of the different parks around all the different lakes around here, you can do that. We have rivers, so if you wanna float the river, go whitewater rafting, again, go fishing, fly fishing, anything like that. This is an outdoor enthusiast dream here. There is so much to do. And that brings me to the next point here, and that is it's a hiker's dream. So 
super outdoors, we are surrounded by the mountains, whether that's the Cascade Mountain Range on the east side or the Olympic Peninsula Mountains on the west side. There is so much to do when it comes to hiking around here and you don't have to travel far to do it. There are plenty of hikes from intermediate or beginner to intermediate to expert level hikes all around here with beautiful scenic views. This is an outdoor person's paradise around here and you can have so much fun outdoors without having to travel too far and just taking a day, a weekend, or even just a few hours in the morning to go on a beautiful hike. Point number 16 you need to know about is there is wildfire smoke over here. So we do get in the summertime a decent amount of smoke that gets blown over here from fires, whether that's in Eastern Washington or down South or up North, you are gonna have some stretches you know, this summer was pretty beautiful. We didn't get some wildfire smoke really until October. And then we had a couple of weeks where air quality was really, really bad around here for those couple of weeks in October. Um, sometimes that'll happen more in the middle of summer, but that's something to know is you can have stretches with wildfire smoke where the air quality can get pretty poor. So just keep that in mind. Point number 17, there are a ton of day and weekend trips around here. Whether you wanna go west to the Olympic Peninsula, like I mentioned, the mountains over there, or all it's to do over the, on the Olympic Peninsula, or you wanna go east uh, to Eastern Washington to places like Leavenworth or Lake Chelan or Wenatchee or all these vacation spots that you can go to around here, or you wanna go up to Canada. There's so many options where you can go for a long day trip or you can go for a weekend trip and not go too far, go an hour or two hours away from your house and have a really nice relaxing trip. There's so much to do around here in the state of Washington in general. Point number 18, people are health conscious around here. So if that's something that's important to you to have really a health conscious environment with grocery stores that support that, like Whole Foods, like Trader Joe's, they're all around the place around here. So you're gonna have access to that kind of stuff to those natural grocery stores, those natural markets in this area if that's something that's really important to you. That brings me to point number 19, that's farmers markets are absolutely everywhere. So no matter what city you're in, it feels like almost every city has a farmers market now on the weekend in the summer. So you wanna go get your fresh vegetables or whatever, there's so many different things at farmers markets these days. It is a great time to spend with the family. Some of them will have them on weekdays. Some cities will have them on the weekends. So there's different options that you can go to. Take the family, take the dog, the kids, go by yourself, whatever. There's so many different farmer's markets around here that you can enjoy. Point number 20, Seattle is a very dog friendly area. Now, of course, I mentioned there's a lot of cities outside of Seattle, a lot of suburbs. Of course, suburbs are dog friendly, but specifically, I mean the city of Seattle. You can live downtown in Seattle. You can live in a high rise condo building and you can have a dog and you can have a dog that's 80 pounds, a golden retriever or something. There's a lot of condo complexes, most of them in apartment complexes that will allow you to have a dog in your complex. There's a lot of people with dogs that live in downtown Seattle that live in these condo or apartment buildings and they walk around with their dog all the time. So it's a super dog friendly city, that is for sure. Outside of the city of Seattle, there's plenty of dog parks everywhere. So if you do live in suburbia, there's lots of off leash dog parks all over the place. Point number 21, traffic sucks around here. You've probably heard that about Seattle. I-5, which is our main freeway that goes through here, can get pretty awful in rush hour. So you got to think about commute times when you're talking about moving over here. Maybe you've got a job set up already. You got to really think about how far away from that job you want to move, how far of a commute is doable for you because you could live 20, 20 miles away and it could take you over an hour to get home. So it's really important to think about those traffic times and research that before you decide exactly where you're moving to. Point number 22, there's a lot of touristy attractions around here. You probably know that maybe if you visited, there's the Space Needle, everybody knows about the Space Needle. There's Pike Place Market down, uh, down in Seattle as well, a huge farmer's market that goes on every single day. Um, there's, there's the waterfront, there's all sorts of different tourist attractions around here for you to visit for yourself or for when family comes to visit you. If you move over here and you've got family out of state and they wanna come visit you, there's so much that you can take them to do all year round in the Seattle area to keep them entertained and show them around the city. Brings me to point number 23 and that's the homeless issue over here. You've probably seen on the news there's a lot of homelessness in Seattle. That is very true. In the city of Seattle, there is gonna be a good amount of homelessness. There's gonna be tent cities, trash on the streets. There's gonna be some areas that maybe don't jive with what you're looking for. What's important to know is most of the suburbs outside of Seattle, that is not how it's gonna feel. You're not gonna have a problem with homelessness around the suburbs that you're gonna be living in. That is not usually an issue in most, if any of the suburbs around Seattle. It is a problem in the city of Seattle in some outlying areas, um, but for the most part, there's plenty of pleasant suburbs to live in that don't have a homeless issue. But when you're in Seattle, you need to know that, you need to be aware of that 
because for some people it might make them uncomfortable and not want to be down there. So just keep that in mind. Point number 24, public transportation. It's okay around here. It's not perfect. It's not absolutely terrible. We have the light rail system, which is our train system that goes through here. It takes you down to the airport south of Seattle. It'll take you up north of Seattle. So, you know, we take it uh, myself. I live north of Seattle. So if we're going to a sporting event, a Seahawks game, a Mariners game, something like that, we'll take the light rail down so we don't have to park downtown. Super convenient. I just went to a Seahawks game last weekend and it saved us a lot of time not having to try and park and a lot of money because parking downtown for a sporting event can be $60, $70. And the light rail to get down there was $3. So it can save you a lot of money for those that are commuting to work. There is that light rail system. It's limited on how far it goes right now. So uh, go to the, the Seattle light rail, just Google Seattle light rail. You can see it here on the screen. It'll show you where the stops are right now, where they're expanding to outside of that light rail. You've got city buses. If you're downtown, you've got some streetcars, water taxis, things like that. Um, but if you're living in the suburbs, you're really gonna need a vehicle to live in the suburbs. You, Unless you live right next to one of those light rail stations and you're commuting into Seattle for work, you, it's really tough to live in the suburbs without a car. So just plan on that. You're gonna need a car. If you want somewhere that's walkable, uh, more commuter friendly, friendly, you're gonna be need to be closer to Seattle. So just keep that in mind. Point number, uh, point number 25 is the music and nightlife scene in the Seattle area. So Seattle was recently ranked as the fifth best city for music and live music. You know, Seattle got to start with music and rock and roll and, and so many different bands that came out of the Seattle area. So it is really popular with, with music with people. There is nightlife downtown. Um, it's, it's a decent nightlife scene. I wouldn't say it's in incredibly spectacular like some of the bigger cities um, but there definitely is a nightlife scene there's lots of bars even in all the suburbs you're going to find bars in most of the suburbs and in places to go at night so it does have a decent and, and good very good music scene and a decent nightlife scene here as well point number 26 we are a sports town people are fanatical here about their uh, professional and college sports teams the seattle seahawks are, are front and center number one and then you got the seattle mariners you've got the kraken hockey team the seattle sounders uh, soccer team you got the seattle storm wnba team you got a lot of different college sports as well um, university of washington mainly speaking so people are really crazy about their sports around here you'll see on fridays during football season a lot of people at work are wearing their seahawks jerseys people go crazy for the game so if you enjoy professional sports, this, you're really going to love this atmosphere. You're really going to fit in really well with this atmosphere here in the Seattle area. Point number 27 is we have great schools around here. U.S. News, you can see here, recently ranked uh, Washington as the number four state for education. Go to greatschools.org, research the schools around here. There's a lot of great school districts, as you can see on these sites. Um, so it's important to do that research. If that's something that's important to you, you've got kids, you're moving over here, the schools are important to you. Do those researches on, on niche.com or greatschools.org. You can see those school districts. It'll show you ratings. There's a lot of, you can see A rating school districts and specific schools. So it can be a great place for schools. There's a lot of private schools around here as well, if that's something that's important to you. Point number 28, there's a vast array of restaurants around here. There's so many different places to eat, so many different types of cuisines uh, from all over the world. You're gonna have a lot of options for where you may wanna eat around here, whether you're in the city of Seattle or in one of the outlying suburbs. Point 29 goes right along with that with beverages, coffee, craft beer, and wineries all around the Seattle metro area. Whether you're into any one of those three or all three of them, you're gonna have a lot of options around here in Seattle for those items. Point number 30, question is, are people friendly here? You hear, hear the term Seattle freeze all the time. My experience is there's a lot of friendly people around here. When you're in the city of Seattle, it can be a bit more hustle and bustle, a bit more cold, people not being maybe quite as friendly in the city of Seattle. And then when you get to the surrounding suburbs, uh, outline of Seattle, it can get a lot more friendly, a bit more community centered, centered, a bit more of a community feel. So pe different people have different experiences. I've had a lot of clients move over here that say they think it's really friendly over here. They've met a lot of great people. So don't let the Seattle freeze scare you. You may feel that more in the city of Seattle than you will anywhere else in the metro area. And the last point, point number 31, is there's amazing views around here. Whether you're at Cary Park or, or any of the you know, Gasworks Park in Seattle, overlooking the Seattle skyline, or overlooking the mountains, or overlooking the Puget Sound. There's amazing views around here in the whole Seattle metro area that you can take in and enjoy a date with your significant other outside or whatever the case is. There's so many different great, amazing views in this area. So that wraps up my list. That's 31 items. I know I blazed through them pretty quick here. 
wanted to keep this video short and sweet for you. So if you've got questions, you're moving over here, you need some help making that move and buying a home over here, like I said, feel free to reach out to me here at my info down below. I'll be more than happy to help you through that process. Appreciate you watching this one.